What really happened on that very first Thanksgiving? I'm John Deere for Blah Blah, and today we talk about the first Thanksgiving. It's a twisted tale that's not at all what we learned in school. The story we learned in school was made up by Abraham Lincoln, who was thrashing around at the beginning of the Civil War looking for a symbol of togetherness. He came up with the idea of pilgrims and Native Americans joyously celebrating together. The story stuck, and we live with it today. The real story starts in 1609, when religious radicals fled England and moved to an industrial town in Holland, where they tried to settle in and live their religious lives. Over the next few years, they became unhappy as their children started speaking Dutch and even enlisting in the Dutch army. These separatists hatched a new plan, which was to seek out financiers to fund a colony in the New World. At the time, there were already 50 million people living in the so-called New World. They were Native Americans. Also at the time, the west coast of what is now the United States already had many cities settled there by the Spanish. Even the east coast had been explored, fished, and plundered for at least 150 years. So when the separatists went looking for backers, they found them. An old line import-export company called the Merchant Adventurers agreed to pay for the journey, provided the group agreed to work once they got there to return exports and repay the loan. When the separatists, who are now calling themselves pilgrims, arrived at their ships, the Mayflower and the Speedwell, they discovered two surprising things. First, the Speedwell was a dump. It was unseaworthy and wasn't going anywhere. Second, half the Mayflower was filled with people the pilgrims called the Strangers. These were company men the merchant adventurers sent along to make sure the pilgrims carried out their part of the bargain. Among them were a variety of military men, including Miles Standish. So off they went on their difficult journey across the ocean to the New World. About 100 of them survived. After a few false landings, they arrived at Plymouth, Massachusetts, which was not where they were supposed to go. However, they held a meeting, elected a governor, and he proclaimed that the crown would not be too upset if they settled there. Why did they select Plymouth? Mostly because there was already a perfectly good empty village located there. With tens of millions of Native Americans already living in North America, the continent was pretty much settled in one way or another. This particular village was empty because in the two years preceding the pilgrims' arrival, a smallpox epidemic had been unleashed by earlier Europeans and had wiped the village out. Native Americans had absolutely no immunity to European diseases, and this great and proud people was being quickly and brutally exterminated. The first Native American they met greeted them in English, saying, Welcome, Englishmen! That first winter, the pilgrims had no idea what they were doing. They lived aboard the Mayflower starving, and more than half of them died. Fortunately, before the next winter, they met another Native American named Squanto. Squanto had been kidnapped by Europeans more than a decade earlier. He was taken to England, taught English, and attempted to be sold into slavery to the Spanish. He was rescued at the last minute by a friar. After this disturbing odyssey, he eventually made his way back to North America and to Massachusetts, where he spent time with the Wampanoag Indians, who are still around today. Squanto helped the pilgrims set up trade with the Wampanoag and other Native American tribes. The pilgrims bought furs and sold them to exporters who took them to Europe. In this way, the pilgrims were able to start paying off their substantial debt to the merchant adventurers. Squanto also taught them about new food, new agriculture, and the new environment they were facing. The next year, 1621, the pilgrims finally got their act together enough to have a good harvest and to celebrate. They did not consider it a Thanksgiving, which in those days was a much more pious holiday, and it was not in November, but it was a feast. According to the official historian of the Wampanoag tribe, in order to celebrate, the pilgrims began shooting their guns in the air. The Native Americans were concerned and sent 90 warriors to visit the small pilgrim village to find out what was going on. 
The warriors greatly outnumbered the pilgrims, who quickly explained they were just celebrating as they prepared their feast. The Native Americans did not trust them and camped out next to the village to keep an eye on them. By this point, there were only four surviving pilgrim women who got the joyous task of preparing the feast for the entire settlement, while some of the men went out and hunted for meat. Indentured servants and children were assigned to help the women. Eventually, they feasted. The pilgrims were polite to the outnumbering 90 Native American warriors camped next door, but according to the official historian of the tribe, the pilgrims considered the Native Americans savages and never got too cozy. And that's the mostly true story of the first Thanksgiving. Sometime later, Miles Standish would go on to murder several Native Americans for no apparent reason and upset the entire apple cart. But that's the story for another day. If you like this episode, please share it. That's what keeps us alive. You can also share and like our Facebook page and mostly subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm John Deere for Blah Blah. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.